I'm fine. This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Frank Smith. Frank, playing golf in Scottsdale yesterday. How'd that go with Eddie? Good. I played tremendously badly for the first nine. You're not good at golf? No, I was really good on the back nine. I didn't warm up or anything. I just went out there, you know. I won't take it too seriously, though, Colin. A bit like, you know, most things. Um, I, uh, but back nine, a few pars, a birdie, a couple of bogeys. Honestly, I was like, there was people out there thinking I was a pro. Do you know what's funny about this Colin situation? Whenever you call me, and I show, so for example, you singing just the two of us, Colin and I, a lot of people reply to me who maybe don't know boxing or don't watch these interviews and say, like, why is he saying your name wrong? Like, do you not know this guy and stuff? And like, people keep on writing. So now, like, there's a thing where people actually think you do call me Colin. So can we just clear it up? It's a bit of a joke. No, I thought that'd be, that's your name, isn't it? Colin McGuigan for AFL TV. I don't know what that accent was. It was horrendous. Right, let's get straight into it. Your uh, future brother in law. Chris Eubank Jr. out of the fight. You're in a, a tricky situation because obviously family ties, you work closely with Conor Ben. Just what happened there, Frank? Look, as always with these things, it comes down to money. Um, and, you know, when it's two individuals, you're within your right to decide what money you want. It doesn't mean that it's, it's going to happen. It doesn't mean that someone's going to pay it. Um, and, in, uh, and that's the only reason it's not going to happen. So, you know, it's what it is. And we have to move on. We have to focus on something else. Um, I'm happy because I feel like we did everything we could. We offered a substantial amount of money that I think both, you know, if you're asking for my opinion on both sides, I think it was more than fair. Um, and a lot of people were taking a lot of risk to make the fight happen. I believe it's the biggest, you know, it can be a huge fight. But at the same time, you also have to believe in it yourself as well. You know, and, you know, I, like I say, I, I'm happy that we did everything we could. And it is what it is. There was a comment from Eddie in my interview that hasn't went live yet, but it's about to, that Barrios Ben Las Vegas first week of February is a possibility. Maybe. Look, there's a lot of fights. You know, we've been, we, although we've been working hard to make this fight, and that's been our focus, obviously it's been our focus. What, you know, it made the most sense for everyone. Um, we've at the same time been working on a number of opportunities as well and a number of different opponents and I you know, hope to have something locked in too. Eddie said it will be announced next week. I know he kind of jumps the gun sometimes, but do you think pre-Christmas we'll have a Conor Ben announcement? Yeah, I believe we will. In terms of that fight and that opponent, is it possible that, I know Eddie said that you were speaking to Devin Haney, that this fight will be kind of like a, a gap fight and then we'll see the Haney fight next for Conor Ben? Uh, possibly, yeah. We Look, it, there's... Connor would jump in with anyone tomorrow. You know, if 147 is his focus, but 154, once he's shown that, he wants the biggest fights possible. Um, so we have to make the right decision at the right time as a, as a team. So we're, we're working through that now and working through the best options and weighing up all of the, you know, the, the positives and negatives from the various options. As well as that, we've obviously seen some comments from Bozy Ennis to me on an interview in San Francisco that you guys are very close to sending Boots Ennis. How close are we to that sending? Did you meet with him when you were in LA? Nothing's close until it's signed, in my opinion, in this sport. You know, like we can talk about how close things are, but until it's signed, nothing's real. And and um, but we'd love to do something with him. But as would a, lo a load of promoters, he's a you know he's a star. He can be a star in the sport. I don't think his profile is where it can be, but you know he's got the ability to to do so. And so for sure, we would love to work with him. But like I say, everyone, every man and their dog is going to want to work with Boot Tennis. AJ Wilder, Mike Coppinger said it's done for March 9th. Confirm or deny? No, nope, not done. Our focus is December 23. It always has been the Otto Wilding fight. As we've spoken about on numerous occasions, there's huge fights to be made in 2024 in the heavyweight division. But right now, our focus is on that, and then we work from there. In terms of that fight, if they both do come through on December 23rd, is that the fight to be made next, and is that likely to land on March 9th? I think it's definitely a fight that we want to make you know not it, we've spoken about it for a long long time we've done too much talking about it and it hasn't happened um so yes that is definitely will be a focus of ours but we're not looking past this date you know and 
you know, people talk about March 9th, it's, it's 10 weeks after, or something like that, after um, December 23rd. So there's a lot of if, buts and maybes in boxing, and uh, we've always got to focus on what's ahead of us, because anything can happen in this sport, and that's the focus, and then we work from there. Sonny Edwards banned today. Um, I want to ask you your opinion on how things went down with Sonny. We've seen a lot of tweets at the beginning of the week. Was that in the contractual agreement, or was it a gentleman's agreement, or what happened there, Frank? Uh, look, um, Sonny is a brilliant. He's brilliant on social media. He he knows how to get things going. And no, well, it wasn't in his contract that he had courtside tickets. It was probably it was probably a conversation he had with Eddie, and Eddie doesn't really understand the basketball. Like I'm sure it went. I want to go to an NFL game, NFL NBA game courtside around my fight, and then he went, yeah, yeah, yeah sort of that. And then when it comes to the Golden State Warriors, they're quite a big deal. Like even I know who the Golden State Warriors are. I know who Steph Curry is. So it's not the easiest thing to get courtside tickets to. But we did it in the end, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he was happy. Was that a headache that you didn't need on fight week? And do you believe that if you didn't deliver those tickets, this fight wouldn't go ahead? No, I don't. I don't believe that. I, I believe. Sonny's good at uh, creating stories uh, and that's what he's brilliant at and that's why he's put himself in a position in a division that's hard to be spoken about he's done a tremendous job to get to that point you know so um, I uh, I don't believe that the fight wouldn't have happened if he got, didn't get the tickets but it's all good fun and we got them done Last one from me because the, the press is just about to start. I want to ask your opinion on Chantel Cameron's comments. I spoke to Eddie about it and he was a bit disappointed and upset at Chantel's comments. From your perspective, is it a bit weird seeing her at the MVP show this week? Is there a potential that she could then sign with them? Is she contractually still with Matchroom? No, look, she's contractually still with us. Um, but the, look, the reality of it is our job is to do the best for our fighters. We've delivered amazing opportunities for Chantel Cameron over the last few years. You know, from winning a world title behind closed doors to unifying it to going to Vegas, to winning an undisputed championship in Abu Dhabi, to challenging Katie Taylor and beating her, or you know, take for, for her for Chantel's belts in a sold-out show. Then going back there again, delivering her some of the biggest nights in the sport, um, huge paydays. That's the focus for us. We need to deliver the best possible opportunities for our fighters. At the end of the day, it's a dangerous sport it's a hard sport and it you know it comes down to finances and we've done a tremendous job for Chantel Cameron and we'll continue to do so you know we've got a contract with her but I think that it's a very emotional sport and you know sometimes that can people will have an opinion of things and you know coming off the back of a loss I'm sure it'll take some time for her to see things but I can sit here and say we've done everything to, to, to give Chantel unbelievable opportunities um, and will continue to do so. You know, uh, yeah, it's, it's never good to see that, but it's not the first time it's happened. It won't be the last time it happened. That's the reality of it. Um, but, you know, we will do everything in our power and I've spoken to her team a lot you know, over the last few weeks. Um, so, yeah, it's one of, one of those things. Well, Frank, always a pleasure. We'll let you get to the press conference and we'll catch up again tomorrow, mate. Cheers, Cheers mate. I'm fine.